Welcome to Roots to Sprouts, another episode of the Vertical Garden Interview Part 2. I'm sure you all enjoyed the Part 1 interview, what we posted few weeks ago. And thanks for all your support and the feedback and the comments that you shared. If you haven't watched Part 1, I will post the link in the description. Please check that before you check the Part 2 video. A quick recap of Part 1. In the first video, we saw the complete layout and the master plan of the vertical garden, how they are growing successfully their fruits and vegetables, and some tips and ideas that they shared with us. In this video, we are going to see, just not the backyard is beautiful, even their front yard flower bed was fantastic and it blooms like anything. We are going to enjoy that. Along with Sanju is going to share how he set up this entire vertical garden. What are the materials required? Plus, they are going to share how they are preventing their pests and what are the fertilizers that they have feeding to their plants to give such a good harvest. And in between, there are a lot of amazing videos that you are all going to watch and enjoy. I hope you will enjoy this video. Sanju, if someone wants to set up a similar garden in a small scale, what are the materials required and how they will go with this setup? Can you please explain? So, whatever you see here, this is uh, called a trellis structure built from EMT conduit. Okay. Uh, EMT conduit, that is a steel galvanized uh, pipe. So, it is actually resistant to uh, rust and all. And this is available in a Home Depot. So, the longer one, that is 10 feet and the smaller one that is five feet okay. the one in the between that's a five feet and the longer one uh, and all these interconnected structures that connectors are called the canopy fittings okay. so canopy fittings i ordered from amazon okay. and these uh, the emt conduit pipe i got it from um, home depot okay home how you grounded it what is the support that you are giving for the ground for them is it a concrete you poured and you put them inside uh, no it... even i tried uh, many trial and error method the best way to uh, set uh -huh. up this structure so this one uh, i tried a drilling uh, digging a hole but this uh, clay is uh, so strong uh, hard it was difficult for me to dig it so i came up with a different idea there is something called a uh, concrete rebar pipe uh, that is something at two and a half feet this long so yeah maybe I, i'll show you in an example later or the picture i'll send you so that is around two and a half feet or three feet so one and a half feet is uh, if you can take it yeah so yeah can you bring that one that uh, three feet conduit uh, that uh, rebar pipe is there in the black color friend yeah, so that might be helpful for people. Um, so maybe uh, she'll just bring it. I'll... So from the ground now it is 10 feet? Yeah, from the ground it is 10 feet. But how much you, it went inside the ground? No, this, this, no, yeah, inside this main pipe, ground? it is above ground. Oh, yeah. it's, it's not in, it's not inside? Yeah, I'll show you. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I'll show you. So this is how this structure is. So what is it? Uh, so this is called the concrete uh, rebar okay. um, tool, I think. Okay. Yeah. Rod. yeah, rod or something. Yeah, concrete okay. rebar rod okay. is what this is called. So this is also available in Home Depot Lofts. Okay. So what I did was, uh, this is a three by four inches, mm -hmm. and this pipe EMT conduit also three by four inches. Okay. So this half actually when it, I put oh. into the ground with this a hammer, inside. with okay. a big hammer. Okay. So this portion half is in the ground, and that pipe is actually yeah, inserted uh, into this one so okay. basically 10 feet these pipes are actually the above the ground uh -huh. so this pipe are 10 feet okay. so my idea was to get uh, more growing space also and my fence in the back is also 10 feet okay okay you so, max that height so i max that height okay so that's how it is uh, supported so Started. if people want to set up a same structure like this what they need to buy is or what they need to look for is uh, 
this one this is a concrete uh, rebar road okay then uh, emt conduit 10 feet okay. and this is a uh, 5 feet then in the top uh, those connectors are called uh, canopy fittings and there are different size of canopy fittings we need to because in the end it is a uh, yeah, end cap kind of thing. Then in the middle it is a T it's kind a of, thing. yeah, corner T, and then it's a cross one. There are different shapes. So we need to first draw a prototype. What is the structure we need? Okay. Accordingly, we need to order the different. Okay. So these are the four items we need. So now we all understand how strong the structure is and what are the materials used to build the structure and look at this video. It really tells the sturdiness of the structure that it can withstand a heavy wind or even a heavy rain. Yeah, you, uh, I can see you have practicing the single stem uh, growing method. Yeah. So how you do that? Because I can see healthy plant uh, planting here. Yeah. So can you explain that? Yeah. So what I do is uh, we need to have a, a much mature healthy uh, stem first. Then only uh, we get. Uh, uh, good flowers and then that fruits turn into uh, fruits later. So what I do is uh, whatever uh, side links comes uh, during that growing stage I'll prune them and I let only that main stem grow until the top. Once it reaches top then I'll turn that stem backwards and from there that time I let it grow uh, everything both the sideways. So all the weight actually of these uh, fruit uh, the whatever vegetable is hanging in this all the weight is actually supported by that top structure okay. the weight is distributed in the top so, so on the top you put the cattle panel right uh, the cattle panel is only for that uh, ash okay. gourd okay yeah only for ash gourd but for rest of all the things the weight is actually held by the top structure oh, okay. so the nylon ropes in between these those are just for uh, support for the uh, roots to grow for the plant to grow okay. till the top Okay. Once it reaches top, then I let it grow down and then I'll let it expand both the sideways. So, so the, the you organize them very well, you just yeah. keep on, on top of it to grow it, right? Yeah, right. So that's why every day we need to spend some time to look around uh, how things are growing and we have to contain everything into that space. Because if it, if we let it grow towards both the sides, yeah. then sunlight will be blocked and then it, we don't get. That's the best example I wanted to show that one. That. Bo uh, bitter, guard. bitter guard and that bottle, uh, you know, that ash guard, right? They, that side there is no uh, opening over there. So these leaves are slowly turning yellow, and I am not seeing much uh, flowers now. But earlier, when that portion was not covered, I had a good crop. So that is a one learning for me also. Uh, so next time I need to optimize that. Maybe I need to move around and adjust that accordingly. Plants are like the stems. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, one year. Uh, but what we do is uh, whatever stem um, we have during the fall time, that we'll cut it and uh, keep it for the next year. Okay. So normally we need a one year cutting for having the fruit next year. Okay. How we will preserve that? Can yeah. Explain? Have to keep in yeah, we have to keep in a container. We, yeah, we have to just cut it and. Uh, 
yeah just to cut it maybe two uh, one one and a half feet in length that stem and uh, put it in a container uh, it has to be inside fall right it's uh, cold weather so yeah. it will start growing yeah we got it from many yeah we can here. yeah we yeah. can propagate with the uh, stem itself yeah. one year stem is what we used yeah i got it from one of my church mate oh, okay. she How many containers? Take a guess. At least ninety. Ninety? Okay. Oh. Now we will ask your dad. You're close, sir. How many, Sanju? Eighty-seven containers. Eighty-seven. Wow. <laughs> See, he got close. <laughs>
So apart from that, what is the cost effective? So if someone wants to, for example, if I want to try that for setting up this free one million, how, how much it will cost and you can give some yeah. approximate? Yeah, approximate. Normally these containers uh, comes in a six pack. So six packs cost around, um, I think, 110 or so it the rate fluctuates i ordered from amazon sometimes it might be 100 then 100 so average 100 dollar is what uh, the price for six containers first time we have to put some investment then later everything is reusable so next year i need to buy a little bit compost and so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so it happens with the, even the traditional method yeah but in traditional method the wooden plant we get compost in a year maybe in four or five years if you are not picking a cedar wood yeah. for your garden bed but yeah. this one will go a long way so yeah and this is like an uh, usda listed this is not pure plastic it is it's made a from a resin uh, resin plant. yeah it's a resin made from resin that is having a natural origin okay. so it's a usda listed that is a poultry and uh, meat oh. Uh, grade yeah. so that means it's kind of food grade because many yeah. people think is it good to have a vegetable grown in a plastic, a plastic container yeah. but i also investigated that the plastic thing so And the pest and all, it's a very minimal with these structures because this soil is not touching the ground. Even, the, even though there are four holes uh, in that container for drainage, but those are in the side, not in the down. So that way, normally the pest attack during uh, the springtime, like snails and all, but 
in this container they don't know what is growing in the top so normally they don't come and eat it so that's a one good thing How do you uh, take care of them from the butterflies mainly? Because yeah. I see when we grow something on the ground, yeah. butterflies, the caterpillars, they chew the leaves and there are a lot of caterpillars on different types of moths and butterflies. Yeah. They chew the leaves completely from the plants. Yeah. But I don't see anything like that happening here. Yeah. What is the secret of that? Yeah. That's a good question. And there's an easy solution. That's, uh, that's an easy solution for that. So. In the night, normally I come out and those worms are very much visible during the night okay. with that um, ultraviolet light. Oh. If we put that light, that alone will be visible. Yeah, that's uh, one uh, advantage for container gardening. Uh, we have to do the plant rotation. That's a must because the one part of this uh, beans family, the beans normally it have more nitrogen content. So next year we should not plant the beans again in this one. So this container actually goes to that side next year oh, okay. because uh, in spring I have um, some efforts. Every container I have to take the soil out and I have to amend it uh, with the. Um, cow manure, yeah. compost and bone meal, these two things and then I'll put it back. So I'll reuse the soil but uh, we have to take it out and remove all the stems, the roots, everything and then we can. So many people have that question, can we reuse the soil in container? Yes, we can but we have to amend it with the compost and the bone meal and the fish fertilizer. Initial stages we need fish fertilizer, basically the nitrogen content more. Then once it is mature, then the phosphorus content for the flower and then the potash. So this NPK, these three things, nitrogen, phosphorus and potash, people should know about that, how to manage that. That is the success behind a vegetable garden. Without knowing that, it would be hard for people. <laughs> I mean, the lad you lay. I find your toad girl, a lamb, mean, and shed you. Another, other we um, with all the vegetable waste, like everything, I mean the balance of the vegetables, everything, and we keep it, where she grind at the same time, all the, uh, at the end of the day she will grind it and uh, we have a, um, 
like a one container yeah, okay. 20 gallon 20 gallon container we kept for that uh -huh. so she save it that we save that and uh, weekly weekly yeah, right weekly once, weekly once yeah. we will let let them to let that things to ferment okay so after two three days, two, three days we, every two three days we mix it oh, okay. with a big stick so then uh, every weekly we use that thing even mix it and all the uh, food waste from the kitchen you will put it yeah, in this grind it, yeah. you grind so ah. we have to grind it that's mm. a key thing Otherwise, if you just put the uh, this is more like a bokashi, yeah, exactly like a bokashi. bokashi. But we don't add any meat, and that is this way it's easy because Correct. we don't want to decompose. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Plant yeah. absorb this very Correct. quickly. Sure, mummy, I mix it. Oh, live mixing. So it is easy. Yeah, uh, when you grind it, it's easy to get. The plant is easy yeah, to consume. To yep. you know. Otherwise, gotcha. it takes okay. a long time to. Be and when you apply this in the uh, in the thing for the plants, uh, do you dilute it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What is the one ratio? Is to three. One is to one three. Is to three? Oh, okay. Okay. One is to one, three. One part of the solution with three parts of water. Water. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Uh, based on the growing stage, uh, if it is not flowering and all, then uh, I'll add add more uh, phosphor, like the okay. bone meal. So, Got it. That way, uh, we can trigger the uh, flowers and then the fruit. Oh, okay. So that's the one advantage in the container because based on the fertilization requirement for each plant is different. Yeah. So we can actually control or apply based on the plant requirement. That's so nice. Yeah. So this is the main, or I, I would say like another uh, secret behind. The <laughs> the no, I really like this method because yes. yes. in composting, it takes if long time. Like now you all know the secret behind the great produce of vegetables and fruits in Sanju's garden. What you are seeing here is the drumstick plant with a lot of produce that's growing in a 15 gallon container. We continuously witnessed in this interview that Sanju can grow any plants in the container and he can get great produce from those plants, no matter whether it is veggies, fruits or greens. He made it possible and this is definitely an eye opener for a lot of gardeners. Once again, thank you Sanju and family for sharing the valuable information and knowledge with us. I'm sure it's going to help many of us. Thanks.